In this video, we'll see the obstruction-free algorithm presented in class with a slight modification. And we're going to see if this modification violates its correctness. So here we can see the obstruction-free consensus algorithm that was presented in class. So its process maintains a timestamp ts that contains the value i, where i is the identifier of this process. And all those n processes serve an array of registers reg n. And each element of this array contains two registers. One that stores the timestamp, we're going to denote with capital T, and one that stores value timestamp pair. So initially it's bar zero, and initially the timestamp in this array is always zero for every process. And then for simplicity, we assume that we have those two processes, highest timestamp and highest timestamp value, where highest timestamp returns to you the highest timestamp across all the timestamps stored in reg from 1 to n t and function highest timestamp value it will return to you the value with the highest timestamp among all elements in this array. And here we can see the proposed function of this algorithm. So a process pi proposes value v then it initially stores its timestamp in its location in this array. Then it gets the highest timestamp value. If no value exists yet in this array, then it's going to store v in val. So it's going to propose its value to be decided. And then it stores the pair val timestamp in the array v. And if its current timestamp is the highest timestamp, then the algorithm terminates, it decides on val. Otherwise, we increment timestamp by n, and the process performs the loop again. So just let me say an interesting fact about this algorithm. This algorithm combined with a leader election algorithm corresponds to Paxos in shared memory. And for those who know Paxos or have heard about Paxos, they can see that some ideas reappear. So some of, of those ideas are the following. A process proposes a timestamp, and then it adapts the value that is associated with the highest timestamp. And then finally, if this process has the highest timestamp, then it decides. So let's clean this a bit and perform one modification here in the algorithm. So instead of plus n, we say plus 1. Now what we ask is, is this algorithm still correct after the change? This was again a problem in uh, the final exam of 2019. So we asked the students, let's make this modification in the algorithm. Is the algorithm still correct, right? And if somebody is suspicious enough, he would realize, or she would realize, that plus n was here for a reason, right? And what is the reason? Why was there plus n? So as we said, initially, every process, pi, has a timestamp initialized to i. And then we keep increasing timestamp by n. So this means, let's say, if we had three processes, p1 and p2, then initially p0 would have timestamp 0, p1 would have timestamp 1, and process p2 would have timestamp equal to 2. So in this example here we have three processes, right? So then the timestamp here would become 3, here the timestamp would become 4, and here would become 5. And then timestamp of process p0 would become 6, timestamp of process p1 would become 7, and timestamp of process p2 would become 8. So we can see that because we keep adding n to the timestamp of its process, timestamps by different processes are always different. So is this necessary for correctness for this algorithm? And indeed, this plus n here was needed for correctness. So with plus 1, the algorithm won't work. But let's present an example on why the algorithm won't work if different processes could have the same timestamp. Again, let's clean this a bit. Okay, how can we find an example where this modification here would lead to a violation of some of the properties of abstraction-free consensus? And the way to think about it, the way to go with such a problem, might be the following. So as we said, n was needed here in order to have different timestamps to different processes. So if we have one here, it's possible, potentially, that different processes have the same timestamp. If this is the case, then maybe processes here 
would both have the highest timestamp and they would return their potential value. So it seems that agreement could possibly violate it in such a scenario. So let's see the scenario exactly. Consider that we just have two processes. Let's say P1 and P2. And let's say that process P1 proposes V while process P2 proposes V prime. Now consider that process P1 takes a step first. So it's going to store in this array timestamp one. Then let's say process P2 takes a step. So it's going to store here two. So after this point, then process P1 will go and check on whether there is a high timestamp value, but nothing has been written yet to array rec.v. So it's going to retrieve back val equals to bar, and therefore it's going to execute this if statement here. So afterwards, val would be equal to v for process P1. Similarly, if process P2 takes a step now, it won't see anything written in array rec.v, so val would be equal, equal to bar, and val would be equal to v prime. Now, assume that process P1 keeps taking steps solo now. So this means that process P1 will store in reg1.v value v timestamp 1, and then it's going to check in this condition here on whether its timestamp, which is 1, is equal to the highest timestamp, which in this case, it's 2. So this is not the case, which means the process P1 will have to increase timestamp by 1, making its timestamp equal to 2. Now, if P1 keeps taking steps, it will write timestamp 2 now in this location in the array, and then when it retrieves back a value from the array rec.v, it's going to retrieve its own value because process P2 has not written anything yet in this array. So val would be again equal to v. So process P1 will continue. It will store the pair with value v and timestamp 2. And then it's going to check again if it's equal to the highest timestamp, which is 2. In this case, this is true, which means that process P1 would return val, which in this case is v. So after this whole execution of process P1, let's see what process P2 can do. And due to space constraints, allow me to slide the slide. So process P2 will continue and it will write in its position value V prime timestamp two. Then it's going to check whether its timestamp, which is two, it's equal to the highest timestamp, which is again two. So this if condition would succeed, meaning that process P2 would return back V prime. So we can see here that process P1 returned V and process P2 returned V prime. Now we naturally could have chosen V and V prime to be different. And therefore, in this example, we showed that this algorithm violates agreement. So just by a small modification in the algorithm, and instead of adding N, we just add one, we see that the algorithm becomes incorrect. And again, as we said before, we want to make certain that different processes take different timestamps. If this is not the case, then problematic issues might arise, as was the case in this example.